We are back at it. I have a rag wet. I may not need it, I don't know. But this is a quick tutorial on how to cover a past, well not a pastel, but a charcoal like I do my charcoal wash um, on paper. Uh, these have to be finished with a spray finish and I've used uh, Kamer varnish and I'll show a little bit about how to set a drawing and then spray it with a, a finished spray so when you wipe the charcoal it doesn't come off it's pretty set and that's important because if you're going to apply something the only reason I'm doing this is so I don't have to mount this is one that's been wax finished I could spill water on this it'd be fine doesn't have to go behind glass um, and just know that sometimes shows if you try to enter a show with something that's been treated like this you may not be able to get it in the show so uh, I don't really give a crap about that um, this is a process for me for my work and I'm I just have a hard time being herded into a gated thing and saying oh you can't do this and you can't do that Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know, but this is just my method that I'm developing. I'm still not, so this is a disclaimer. Um, I'm not saying that this is gonna save your stuff and you're not gonna make a mess. I've already made a mess on one of my really nice drawings. I forgot to spray finish it. So when I put the finish on it, God, if she's in here, I would love to find her. But when I put the spray finish on her, and I knew it was gonna happen eventually, um, I didn't use the cray the Kmar varnish. I just did the fixative, final fixative, and when I put the charcoal on her, she went really dark. She was dark anyway because she's backlit and she's lit from the uh, behind her. So she was backlit anyway. This guy is lit to the front, and what I normally do is I take into consideration where my lightest lights are and the face. I want to preserve the face. I don't want an accident to happen in the face. It can mess up somewhere else. I don't really care. I have a rubber spatula. This is Dorland's wax medium. Um, many manufacturers make it. It's pretty much all the same, but it dries and then you can polish them and they, they have a sheen. She's not been polished yet. So um, I'll show you one that has been polished. Yeah, she's right over there. Well, here. Well, I'm thinking about it before I forget. This one you can tell has a shine. So I'm working on him. He, I just buff him down and I'm using a, one of those throwaway trash bags that everybody hates. Uh, that I, when I used to do encaustics, that's what they shine encaustics with. So encaustics is wax, this is wax. This works fine for me. I don't want it to be too glossy shiny um, and I want it really mainly in the focal area. So I've, I will about, I'm about ready to apply the wax. I start in the lightest areas, so. I want to make sure he's clean. I start right in the eyes and the face. And I put a thin coat. Now, it's not that thin, but I start there because once I have laid wax over the charcoal and the painting, it's not going to go anywhere. So now I'll go to my next most important area, which is him in general. That The background is fine. I'll apply more and I cover the entire surface. If it's really textured, she was really textured. That is some old watercolor paper. I don't even think they make it anymore. It has a really rough texture to it and therefore it makes the whole drawing look kind of rough and pitted. So I put more wax on that one a couple of times. And we'll see if that helps. I don't really use that paper that much. This is all still a lesson for me. I'm still figuring my way through it. And when I um, started, I just used scrap stuff I had. So I don't have any more of that, wa uh, that watercolor paper. I'm not even sure they make it, I don't know. But I'm covering everything. You can see it's got a, a smoky, milky finish on it. And if you're not sure, pick it up, hold it up in the light, and see where you've missed. I try to go all the way to the edges. Now I'm going to trim the bottom off of him. I was going to do that before I started, and I, it slipped my mind. So 
in this case, I'll go all the way out to as far as I can go that I have support underneath it and make sure I have wax on it. And I make sure I get my edges. You want to get all the way out to the edge of the paper, and I will use this because wax is so slick. Once I touch it and get it on my hands, I can hardly hold my rubber spatula, which I've done. I got it on my hands. Okay. Once I know I'm good and covered, I will systematically use the flat side. Mm. And some right there. Okay. I will systematically use the flat side of this and go back over it evenly and take off the excess. I don't want all of it. I don't want it scraped down to the paper. I actually want some of the wax to stay on the paper. You can see how well See how clean the wax is? You can see how well this process keeps the drawing, the watercolor and the acrylic stationary. And again, I don't want to remove all of it. When it dries, I'll polish it. If I need to, I'll, I'll coat him two times. But right now, I'll just see what I've got. He was on smoother paper, so I'm not worried. But I do want enough charcoal all the way, or I mean wax, all the way out to the edges. Ah, it slipped, slick. Now my spatula is. It happens. I could go wipe it off, but it's probably going to happen again. So I'm just going to do this real quick. You can tell when it slips out of my hand how lightly I'm doing this. I'm not scraping. The drawing. I don't want to tear up the acrylic paint on top of it. I don't want to scratch up the surface. I just want to float over the top of the wax, get the striations out, the streaks out where it's thick and thin and thick and thin. Now I'll set this off to dry in about three days. I can come back and check it. and see if it's ready to polish. Okay, I think that about does it. Thanks for joining me.